Good morning. Thank you for joining me today. I will be showing you pictures from my river trip from Paris to Normandy on the River Seine, which is 485 miles long. It starts in Burgundy and ends up in the old French capital of Honfleur, and you see the picture of it right there. This is the longest navigable river in France. Medieval history was really strong here. It was the highway of the medieval kings, knights, cargo, military, and all commerce. My name is Zygmunt, and I invited Richard from Ama Waterways, a premium river cruise line, to help me out a bit here. Ama has more top awards for European river cruising than any other cruise line, and he can fill the many gaps in my knowledge. So let's start. We're leaving from Paris, which is a subject of another video, and here we have the top of the ship with the Eiffel Tower in the background. I uh, can go under all the bridges, whereas uh, sometimes when the water is high, some other ships cannot. The captain will tell you, okay, everybody sit down, don't stand up, because you might lose your head. Yeah, okay. that's a point that you bring up there also because our, um, our owner, Rudy Schreiner, is an architect by trade, so when he designed these ships, he was, he, he was thinking of all these different things. The railings that you see on the side in this picture on the top left, those can actually lower the bridge, as we mentioned, that can lower as well. One thing that really surprised me when floating away from Paris are all the different houseboats that you can see on there. The imagination on some of these people, what they did with the houseboats is just fantastic. On the left top, you see some graffiti, which you don't see very much over there, but this was a very big graffiti mural on the wall. And bottom right, you can see just sitting there and watching the river goes by and the scenery. One of our first stops was Les Adli, which was founded in the 6th century. We got the bicycles off the ship and went riding through the town, which I strongly would recommend. It's absolutely fantastic. This was the formerly the strongest fortress in France. It's in ruins now. By, it was built by King Richard of England in the 12th century. And he built it to defend against the French. And the French took it over in 1204 and had it since then. We bicycled along the banks and through the old town, and they took us over to the old city hall, showing us the history, the paintings, and it was really nice. As you sail down the Seine, sitting on the deck, looking at the river banks, you see all kinds of homes and houses and some very interesting architecture. Just sit there, sip your coffee, eat your chocolates, and you'll be really, really in heaven. Now. King Richard, the Lionhearted, was in prison in this castle. He was coming back from the Crusades and a storm forced his ship to land. He was disguised and tried to escape, but he was captured by Leopold V of Austria. And in 1192, he was put in this Dunstein castle. Richard bought his way out with what's equivalent to billions of dollars and went back to England. Now, on a river ship, you sail at night and during the day you import, unlike the ocean ships. No crowds, no waves, great way to sail. Cabins on the ship are all river facing. I shot this photo from my cabin as we were sailing. Now we are on the Baltic coast by the cities of La Havre and Honfleur. Uh, Honfleur is a very old port on the shore of the Seine estuary. And it's the whole area is a takeoff to the Normandy beaches. This, you can see the narrow streets. And once we see uh, the next picture in Honfleur, you see slate covered houses. Here it is it's from 13, 14 centuries. Uh, really beautiful site, beautiful area. This was a focus of a lot of painters like Monet, Baudin, Jean Kind. And uh, there's a famous church here, St. Catherine the Church, which is the largest wooden church in France. It was made out of beams and mess out of ships. Uh, this port, Honfleur, was a 12th century, very, very big shipping port for the goods to England. 
And in the 1608, Champlain sailed from here and he found Quebec. Now, Little Streets, now look at this beautiful old 12th century, 13th century alleys that you can just imagine. Um, the knights, the drunken sailors, and uh, all kinds of fights going on between the French and the British among these walls. I, I, okay, here, uh, I thought there were two girls painting, please do no more war. When I got closer, I realized those are not two girls painting. The two girls are actually painted on the wall, which I found very, very interesting. This is Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial, where 9,388 young servicemen were buried. Right, uh, this is overlooking the bluff at Omaha Beach. Um, two sons of Theodore Roosevelt are buried here. Two Neyland brothers, whose story inspired the Steven Spielberg uh, Saving Private Ryan's here. This is called the spirit of American youth rising from the waves because mostly young men died. Here we honor 9,386 soldiers, but also on the wall of the missing, we honor 1,557 service members whose bodies were not recovered, except for 19 of them. And the average age here in the cemetery is 24 years old. Therefore, the statue in front of you, carved by Donald Delu, representing spirit of American youth rising from the waves The enormity of the tragedy really hits you when you walk amongst all the crosses, thousands and thousands of crosses, as far as the eye can see. In front of the World War II monument, there was a pond or a little lake with the lilies that I shot the picture. This is Omaha Beach Memorial, and unfortunately there are no people, so you couldn't see the size of this. It's actually huge, and the waves just came in, so people left. Uh, but the tide comes in and goes out, and this is where the thousands and thousands of young Americans and allies attacked the beach and were just mowed down by machine guns. And this is one of the big guns that would shoot at the Allied ships. This can go out to about 13 miles. And uh, this, there were about four of them, or five, I don't remember exactly. But this is a big, big gun. Now, over here on Normandy beaches, an area, we were lucky we had three different choices of tours. And there was one in the morning, and one in the afternoon, and one next day. And you can take, I would recommend the Honfleur half a day tour in the morning, then in the afternoon, I would recommend the have a bike tour, and next day the World War II landing beaches, U.S. sector, really, really great. I didn't do the U.K. and Canadian sector, so I do recommend those trips. And we were lucky that AMA does all three other river cruises, many of them just do one, and they charge for the rest. We're on the ship now getting ready to go to Rouen, which is known as the city of a hundred spires. In the 17th century, the city was actually the second largest city in France. It is now known for a couple of many things, the Notre Dame Cathedral, the 700 or so half-timbered buildings, and the fact that Joan of Arc was burned at the stake here in 1431.
you can see on the left hand side uh, during World War II this, this town was really attacked and about half of it was wiped out and they left some of the buildings still with uh, the bullet holes the, if this, remember what happened on the right hand side you see the uh, Joan of Arc Hotel, Hotel Joan of Arc Church where uh, Arc was buried next to Burn, right next to where the church was built of course soon later but it has some fantastic stained glass windows and if you're into stained glass windows that's it you've got to go and see this church because almost all around you see nothing but stained glass variety and my picture does not do it justice and one of the things that you see that since this this town has so many cathedrals or so many buildings and a lot of them these gargoyles these giant gargoyles you look up and you just wonder which one of them is going to hit you in the head. Well, none of them did, really. But here's one on the left-hand side that I kind of zoomed in and took a picture of. But all of these places, we love gargoyles in this town. I have no idea why. Uh, this is from the Palace of, well, this is the Palace of uh, uh, Justice. In the West. And as you're walking past, you will see a variety of different buildings are just absolutely fantastic. It's worth the town tour. And also a chocolate tour uh, or a food tour in there. You really have an example of medieval architecture downtown. Plus you have some famous restaurants right next to the church. You have buildings that have been there since 12, 1300s and they look like it. They are stored very nicely but they're really evil buildings that you can just imagine. And, you know, somebody's going to ask you on the tour, why are those stones right there by the entrances? And I didn't know until I found out. Well, that's because people had to get up on their horses, so they had to get on the stone in order so they could get on a horse. So when you're going through some little towns, you're going to find right by entrances a bunch of stones sitting there. So that's for people to jump on a horse. This is uh, right next to the church, Joan of Arc was burnt and people don't know but she led the French army, some people don't know, most of you probably do, I didn't, she led the French army to a number of victories against the British or English and she said she received a vision from God to support France against the English and for that when the English captured her, they buried her at the stake but she won a number of battles, she converted a number of generals Generals who were in the 30s, 40s, 50s, she led them against the Brits. And you know when she died? She was only 18 years old, 19 years old. 19. Just one example uh, of one of the churches, and you see dozens of them as you're walking through the town. It is the town right which is right next to Monet's uh, and garden. These are a lot of artists who live there. Artists who are modern and artists who live there for 500 years. And now that we're burning the tour the as to Monet's garden, which is the next picture. This is where he took all his ideas about the lilies and the flowers. Uh, I could have thrown in a whole bunch of flowers, but I really didn't want to spoil it in case you're going to be seeing it. Some beautiful, beautiful flowers there. And uh, here is when we were leaving the towns. And you can see the kind of, again, interesting sights you would never see going down the California River, for example. Next, we should have, this is Napoleon's Chateau. Now, although it said it's an important ship down, but actually, uh, Josephine is the one who bought it. Josephine bought the chateau when he was in the, I believe it was Egyptian campaign in 1797. Now, after a while, she kicked him out, and uh, he came back after she died, when he lost the Battle of Waterloo. And he stayed there for a little bit, and then got exiled to St. Helena. You see Napoleon's bed. He was a short little fella, 
so you can see the bed is short and you can't fit too many people uh, on there, just, just him. On the right hand side are one of the many opulent rooms in the Chateau. Uh, it's a really a fantastic experience to go tour through it. And on this, this one right here is actually Josephine's bed. Her bed is much nicer, a little longer. What you don't see here on the other side somewhere was his mistress's room and bed, which I didn't take a photo of for some reason. And on the right is Napoleon's library. This is finding a little back in Paris, and this is where the ship landed. And you can see the Eiffel Tower all lit up with the red uh, lights, etc. because it was 4th of July. We left and at Paris, 4th July 2019, and the French really, no matter what people say, the French really loved the Americans for liberating them. They made a big to-do with the Eiffel Tower, with all the lights, with uh, songs and music, and you see that little Statue of Liberty right in front. So again, we're back in Paris, and that's my little short pictures. I'm going to post all of this and a lot more later on this week on our website. Richard, back to you. Just a few things that I want to be able to make you aware of, being able to protect your travel investment. First of all, I can tell you that we are a solid company. We are not going anywhere. We are financially stable. We've got strong financial um, backers. We have all of our uh, fleet completely paid off in full, including three ships that are going to be delivered next year, paid in full. In addition to that, you as a, uh, a guest of ours can purchase something called Travel Waiver Plus um, for a nominal cost, and it would allow you to protect your full travel investment. You can go ahead and cancel for any reason up to 24 hours prior to departure. Um, and it, again, you don't get necessarily, you know, you're going to get a full monetary refund, but let's say you cancel within 60 to 90 days prior to departure. Normally, there's a 35% penalty that we would assess uh, if you're covering for canceling for a non covered reason. In that instance, what we would do is rather than uh, having you completely lose that 35%, we would retain it as a future cruise credit. So when you're ready to book, we have that available for you for your future cruise credit. Um, the next slide that's coming up right here, we are the only American river cruise line that's currently sailing rivers of Europe on one ship in particular, it's Ama Christina. This right now is exclusive to our German-speaking audience. So it's um, operating on the Rhine presently doing five nights, um, five night sailings. There's a great way for us to be able to put into motion some of the things that we've been making plans for in terms of what it's going to look like when we go back to, to, to river cruising. So our German audience has been wonderful. Um, if you've had a chance to go out to a restaurant anytime recently, you know that when you walk into the restaurant, you wear your mask. When you sleep, you can go ahead and take that mask off. But if you get up, you get up and use the restroom or you're leaving the restaurant, you put the mask back on. It's basically the same thing on board. In addition to that, we're upgrading to you know hospital grade disinfectants. We're increasing the frequency of the, the times that we clean um, everything on board the ship. And I can tell you that, that there's a lot of cleaning that went on prior to this. Um, but again, doing everything that we can to ensure the safety of our guests. And here's just a few pictures of the folks that are um, have been able to go on board. The response has been really positive. We've had a number of people actually book a second cruise. Um, this slide right here is a look at our lounge area where we uh, place, uh, put these plexiglasses uh, in place so that you can actually, you know, which again, when you walk your seat, wear your mask, you sit there, you can take it off. We've got these nice unobstructed views. You can talk to the guests that are sitting behind you. It's important to say that uh, you only have 100 people on the ships. Right now. Yeah, this is true, at least until further notice. Um, one of the rules that came out from the European Union was that we cannot have any more than, I think they said more than 75% capacity on board, um, which would, based on the average capacity of our, our ship, would be somewhere like maybe 105, 110. We opted to just go up to 100 guests maximum on board every one of our ships. So even Alma Magna, which holds a total of 196 guests, it is the single largest river cruise ship in the industry, so none of them are quite that large, but even on that ship, no more than 100 guests on board. So very good point, Peter. Thank you for, for bringing that and up. And I've, I've been on a number of cruises, river cruises, and there are the mass market cruises that uh, are a little bit different. Then there is the upscale cruise, which on my water was, I call it much upscale because the wines are premium that are free. The uh, lunch and dinner, the premium beers, lunch and dinner are free. Uh, the tours are higher, much higher end tours. 
it's a different experience going on a, on a river cruise where uh, you are treated in a better quality and not nickel dime to death as some other well-known cruise and river cruises. Good point. Thank you for sharing that. Sorry. I know that was pretty, pretty comprehensive. That was a, um, a, a really thorough overview, though, of really all the different places you get to stop. Um, I know we didn't share a lot of what the onboard experience is like, but hopefully some of the things that we've inserted give you a really good idea of what that onboard experience is like coupled with the land destination experience. It's just the best way to travel. In addition to actually being on the cruise and stopping at these destinations, we have some wonderful things depending on when you look to travel. So the Christmas markets being one that we're going to talk about next week. It's a magical, magical time out in town. Um, but also we have like our celebration of wine theme departures, which is another really great experience where we send a North American wine host on board. He's your expert guy. He's talking about how the old world wines differ from the new world wines. It's just a wonderful experience. So um, hopefully you'll be able to join us next week as we talk about the Christmas markets. And just before we're looking to close here, Digman, is there anything else you might want to want to add? Yes, if there are any questions whatsoever about cruises 2021, 2022, and later, just please email me at rivercruise at rivercruisecenter.com, and I'll, if I don't know the answer, I'll get it for you. And thank you very, very much for listening, especially to me, which uh, Richard makes sense, I sometimes do not. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Be safe, and we hope to welcome you on board sometime very soon. Have a good night.